let's open with a with a prayer. Lass es mit einem Gebet an. Dear Heavenly Father, Lieber himmlischer Vater, Lord, I want to thank you for a new week. Herr, ich will dir danken für eine neue Woche. I want to pray now that you would help us to understand your word. Und ich möchte jetzt beten, dass du uns hilfst, dein Wort zu verstehen. Help us to understand the importance of this theme. Und hilf uns, die Wichtigkeit dieses Themas zu verstehen. And not to make light of the responsibilities that we have been given. Und nicht leichtfertig mit diesen Verantwortungen um gehen, die uns gegeben wurden. But rather impress the seriousness of these things upon our heart. Sondern vielmehr beeindrucke die ähm, Wichtigkeit oder die Ernsthaftigkeit ähm, dessen auf unsere Herzen. So please come amongst us now and bless your people. Und bitte komm jetzt unter uns und segne dein Volk. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Und wir bitten das im Namen Jesus. Amen. 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 Go to uh, Deuteronomy 25. Now, we've been looking at some things in regards to this theme over the past few days. Okay, so let's begin looking at a principle that we looked at last night. Und fangen wir an, indem wir uns ein Prinzip anschauen, das wir auch gestern Abend angeschaut haben. Okay, Deuteronomy 25 und Vers 5. 5. Mose 25 und Vers 5. It says, if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that the name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him, and if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders, and loose his shoe from off his foot, and spit in his face, and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house, and his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that has the shoe loosed. Right, now, all these things are an allegory. Right? Und all diese Dinge sind ein Gleichnis. And we read in the story of Ruth that uh, this elder brother didn't want to mar his, uh, inheritance. his inheritance, right? Und in der Geschichte von Ruth haben wir gelesen, dass der älteste Bruder, der wollte nicht um, seine, sein Erbteil irgendwie um, schädigen. schädigen. Okay, so in according to um, the Bible, who would this brother represent? Gemäß der Bibel, wer würde diesen Bruder, wer würde dieser Bruder darstellen? We just looked at this last night. Who, who, Satan, right? Also Satan. Okay. Satan means the adversary, right? Satan bedeutet der Widersacher. He, he was, he's this great rebel. Er ist right? dieser große Rebell. So, the, the feeling to pass on the seed is makes you one with Satan, right? Also, das ähm, Versagen, dass du diesen Samen aufrechterhältst, macht dich eins mit Satan. And this, the symbol of this is that your shoe is taken off, right? Und das Symbol davon ist, dass dein Schuh weggenommen wird. Okay, and uh, I want us to understand this, this point. Ich möchte, dass wir diesen Punkt verstehen. Because the Bible always interprets itself, right? Weil die Bibel sich ja immer selbst auslegt. Okay, so go to Genesis 38 and we see a, a, a living illustration of this, right? Geht jetzt zu 1. Mose 38 und da 
wenn wir eine lebendige Darstellung davon sehen. Okay, Vers 6. Vers 6. And Judah took a wife for Er, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Tama. And Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up a seed unto thy brother. So he's now telling them to do this according to the law of God, right? So er sagt ihm jetzt, dass er das tun soll gemäß dem Gesetz Gottes. Okay. So um, it says, and Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give his seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So why does he say also? Also, warum sagt er, er hat ihn auch erschlagen? Well, if you can understand relation to the first law, the first brother also didn't want to, or he didn't perform this uh, work of uh, producing a seed, right? Wenn man das in Bezug auf das Gesetz versteht, dann hat auch der erste Bruder ähm, das nicht, also dieses Gesetz nicht erfüllt, dass er seinen den Samen aufrechterhält. So basically, if you don't pass on the seed, right, you're like Satan and you're going to be slain. Also im right? Grunde, wenn du diesen Samen nicht weitergibst, dann ähm, wirst, bist du wie Satan und du wirst erschlagen werden. Right, because it's a, it's a commandment, right? Weil das ist ein Gebot. Okay, we'll see that this in a moment. Right? Wir werden das gleich noch sehen. So go to Luke 8 and verse 11. Gehen wir zu Lukas 8 und Vers 11. It says now the parable, the what? Was? The parable das Gleichnis. is this, that the seed is the word of God. So, das das Wort so what is it that you're passing on? Also was gibst du weiter? The word of God. The, the, okay, the gospel, right? Das Wort Gottes, das Evangelium. Okay, and if we go to Matthew 13, verse 38, Gehen wir zu Matthäus 13, Vers 38. It's the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Right? So, the seed is the word of God, but it's also the, the good, the good children. Right? Also, der Same ist das Wort Gottes, aber es ist auch die guten Kinder. Those that obey God. Diejenigen, die Gott gehorchen. And in 1 John 3, in verse 9. In 1. Johannes 3, Vers 9. It says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. So, how was this person born? Also, wie wurde diese Person geboren? Because they received the seed, right? Weil sie den Samen erhalten haben. Had they not received the seed, they would have remained a sinner. Right? Wenn sie den Samen nicht erhalten hätten, dann wären sie ein Sünder geblieben. Yes? Ja? Yeah. Okay. So, and we go to James 1, verse 21. Dann gehen wir zu Jakobus 1 und Vers 21. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. So what's the only thing that's able to for you to save your soul. Also, was ist das Einzige, was ähm, äh, dich dazu, ähm, dass du deine Seele erretten kannst? Oh, seed. Seed. Right, but the only way for you to be saved is to receive the seed. Right? Die einzige Art und Weise, dass du gerettet werden kannst, ist, dass du den Samen erhältst. And I just thought, come to mind, go to Isaiah 55. Gehen wir zu Jesaja 55. Here's the same principle right here, verse 1. Here's the same principle in verse 1. It says, Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and 
Eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Okay, and if you go down to verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So, when you receive the seed, what does it now give you? Sorry? Bread to the eater and seed to the soul. It gives you seed, right? And what are you to do with that seed? You have to sow it, right? Okay, it's the same allegory, right? So you have to sow the seed. Right? So, the only way to be saved is to receive the seed, right? So if you don't sow the seed, you're wicked. Right? But you can't sow the seed unless you first <coughs> receive it, right? So there's a genealogy in the Bible, right? And if any one of those persons had failed to sow the seed, the genealogy would have been broken, right? Right. So if you fail to do that work, you're, you're Satan's children, right? Okay, so, so I'm just making this point, right? So, no. it just shows the, therefore that you first need to be married to Christ before you can yes do public evangelism. Yes, because you have to receive the seed, right? Das zeigt, dass man zuerst mit Christus verheiratet werden kann, bevor man öffentliche also muss, ähm, bevor man öffentliche Evangelisation machen kann, weil man muss ja eben den Samen erhalten. Right. Okay. So, but, so there, there are people that will refuse to sow the seed, right? Und da wird es Leute geben, die werden sich weigern, den Samen zu sehen. And um, as you said, it's generally because you, you have not received it first yourself, right? Mm. If you're not married to Christ, then you're not being led by a right spirit. And you will manifest that by refusing to go forth and sow the seed. Du wirst es manifestieren, indem du dich weigerst, vorwärts zu gehen und den Samen zu sehen. It was like with the two which received the revelation before Ellen White, they did not give it. These two men. I don't know if both of them didn't give it, but yes, the, the first one definitely, he jumped up and says that he was lost, right? Also das war auch wie mit diesen zwei Männern, die vor Ellen White berufen worden sind, sie haben es dann auch nicht getan und also auf jeden Fall der erste hat es ähm, abgesprungen und hat realisiert, dass er verloren ist. Okay. But, but yes, it's, it's a true point. Right. But go to Matthew 22, right? Gehen wir zu Matthäus 22. So the point I'm making is Satan will not only tempt people not to share the truth, but he will also bring any Counterfeit of that, right? Also Satan wird nicht nur die Leute versuchen, die Wahrheit nicht zu teilen, sondern er wird auch eine Fälschung hereinbringen. Okay, so Matthew 22, verse 23. Matthäus 22 und Vers 23. It says, The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, 
Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. So he's quoting this, what we've studied, right? Also er jetzt das, was wir studiert haben. And these men are wicked, right? That are quoting this. Und diese Menschen sind ja böse, die das zitieren. Okay, it says, <coughs> Now there were with us seven brethren. How many? Wie viele? Seven, right? Sieben. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and third unto the seven, and last of all the uh, last of all the woman died also. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall be of the seven, for they all had her. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Right? So, now, these things have got m many significations, but specifically, these things are written for us to understand what this is referring to. Right? Also, diese Dinge haben viel Bedeutung, aber es ist für uns spezifisch geschrieben, damit wir ähm, wissen, auf was sich das bezieht. So, All these men died for what reason? Also all diese Männer starben aus welchem Grund? <coughs> Because they didn't pass on the seed, right? Weil sie den Samen nicht weitergegeben haben. And the woman died also, Und right? Die Frau starb auch. Okay, now I want to see that this uh, shows that this is an allegory of Satan's counterfeit, right? Ich möchte euch zeigen, dass es ein Gleichnis ist für Satans Fälschung. Okay, so go to Daniel chapter 2. Gehen wir zu Daniel 2. Vers 36. It says, This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. So he's a type of Christ, right? <coughs> Or he's, he should be a type of Christ. Right? Okay. It says, And wheresoever the children of men dwelt, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So, how many kingdoms do we see here? So, how many kingdoms see we here? There's four, right? Yeah. But the fourth is made up of two parts, right? Das vierte ist aus zwei, besteht aus zwei Teilen. Okay, so there's five, right? Also, da gibt es fünf. And it says God sets up kings and takes down kings. Und es sagt, Gott setzt Könige ein und setzt Könige ab. When does he take down the kings? Und wann setzt er die Könige ab? When they're wicked. Yes. Wenn sie right? böse sind. Right? So, and if you go to Revelation 17 and verse 9, Wenn wir zu Offenbarung 17, Vers 9 gehen, it says, Here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. How many mountains does she sit on? Auf wie vielen Bergen sitzt sie? Seven, right? Sieben. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen. And one is, and the other is not yet come. So there's these seven kings, right? Also da gibt es diese sieben Könige. And who sits on every single one of them? Und wer sitzt auf jedem Einzelnen? The same woman, right? Dieselbe Frau. So every one of those kings had this same woman, right? Also jeder einzelne von diesen Königen hatte dieselbe Frau. But what did the Lord do to every one of them? Und was hat der Herr mit jedem einzelnen gemacht? Slew them, right? Sie erschlagen. Why? Warum? Yes, but just think of the allegory. Right? Yeah, they they passed on a corrupt seed, right? Sie haben einen korrupten Samen weitergegeben. They didn't pass on the true mm. gospel seed, right? Sie haben nicht um, den wahren Evangeliumssamen <coughs> weitergegeben. Because they are a type of Christ, and had they had the true gospel seed, they would have 
they would have prospered, right? Weil sie waren ein Typus für Christus und hätten sie den wahren Evangeliumsamen weitergegeben, dann werden sie gedient. Okay, so it's, it's teaching us this same principle, right? Es lehrt uns dasselbe Prinzip. Okay. Um, but there was four kingdoms there, right? Es gab vier Reiche da. So those four kingdoms are also in agreement with these with the same allegory about these seven sons or these seven kings. Diese vier Königreiche sind auch in Übereinstimmung mit derselben mit demselben Gleichnis über diese sieben Königreiche. It's the same allegory, right? It's the same gleichness. Okay, so we go to Exodus chapter 20. Gehen wir zu 2. Mose 20. Vers 4. Vers 4. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, nor any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Right? So how many generations does it go down to? Also, wie viele Generationen geht das runter? Four, right? Yeah. Okay. So, it says you're not to make any graven images, no idols, right? Es sagt, du sollst keine ähm, Bilder oder Götzen erstellen. Okay, so go to the next quote that we're very familiar with. Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat, mit dem wir sehr vertraut sind. It says, in rejecting the truth, men reject its author. Okay, so when we reject the truth, we reject Christ. Also wenn wir die Wahrheit ablehnen, lehnen wir Christus ab. In trampling upon the law of God, they deny the authority of the lawgiver. It is as easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone. So, these seven kings, what do they all have in common? Also, these seven Könige, what have they all in common? They're all idol worshippers, right? <laughs> right? And it's shown us that this woman jumps from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, right? So it says, it is easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone. So when you understand this principle, they were... They were disobeying God and passing on the seed. They were passing on a corrupt seed, right? Wenn man dieses Prinzip versteht, dann waren sie eben ungehorsam ähm, Gott gegenüber, dass sie diesen Samen weitergeben. Sie haben einen korrupten Samen weitergegeben. So the external is just illustrating the internal, right? Das externe stellt einfach das interne dar. So it goes down to seven sons, right? Das geht eben diese sieben Söhne. It's the same illustration, das right? Das ist dieselbe Darstellung. Okay, because seven is the number of perfection. Weil right? sieben ist die äh, Zahl der Vollkommenheit. Okay. By misrepresenting the attributes, the attributes of God, Satan leads men to conceive of him in a false character. With many a philosophical idol is enthroned in the place of Jehovah, while the living God, as he is revealed in his world in Christ and in the works of creation, is worshipped by but few. Thousands deify nature while they deny the God of nature. Though in a different form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today as verily as it existed among ancient Israel in the days of Elijah. So, when we hold on to false concepts, we have idols in our heart, right? Also, when we on false concepts, Dann haben wir Götzen in unserem Herzen. And if we pass on those false seeds, we're going to die. Und wenn right? wir diese falschen Samen weitergeben, werden wir sterben. Okay, we have to be, we have to take this very seriously. Wir müssen das ähm, sehr ernst nehmen. Um, the God of many professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, politicians, journalists, the God of polished, fashionable circles, of many colleges and universities, 
even of some theological institutions, is little better than Baal, the sun god of Phoenicia. So it likens it unto worshipping the sun. Right? Okay. So, no error accepted by the Christian world strikes more boldly against the authority of heaven. None is more directly opposed to the dictates of reason. None is more pernicious in its results than the modern doctrine so rapidly gaining ground that God's law is no longer binding upon men. Every nation has its laws which command respect and obedience. No government could exist without them. And can it be conceived that the creator of the heavens and the earth has no law to govern the beings he has made? Suppose that prominent ministers were publicly to teach that the statutes which govern their land and protect the rights of its citizens were not obligatory, that they restricted the liberties of the people and therefore ought not to be obeyed. How long would such men be tolerated in the pulpit? But it is a graver offence to disregard the laws of states and but is it a graver offence to disregard the laws of states and nations than to trample upon the divine precepts which are the foundation of all government? Okay, so Seventh-day Adventists believe that the law of God is binding, right? Seventh-day Adventists believe that the law of God is binding. 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 Right. So why is it then that so many Seventh-day Adventists are going to die for breaking God's law. Warum ist es dann, dass so viele sieben Tags Adventisten sterben werden, weil sie Gottes Gesetz brechen? What is it that they don't understand? Was verstehen sie nicht? Okay, let's let's read Psalm 78. Lesen wir Psalm 78. It says, Give ear, verse 1, Give ear, O my people, to my law. What are you to give ear to? Was sollst du dein Ohr ähm, schenken? His law. Zu seinem Gesetz. Now we read in Isaiah 55, if we give ear to him, we're going to live, right? Wir haben in Jesaja 55 gelesen, wenn wir, ähm, ja, wenn wir ihm zuhören, dann werden wir leben. And he's going to make a covenant with us. Und er wird einen Bund mit uns schließen. And then we would have seed to give to others, right? Dann werden wir Samen haben, um anderen zu geben. So it says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. So how has he given us his law? Also, wie gibt er uns sein Gesetz? In parables. In Gleichnissen. Right? So if we don't understand the parables, what are we going to do? Also, wenn wir die Gleichnisse nicht verstehen, was werden wir tun? Disregard his law. Wir werden sein Gesetz missachten. We will sow a false gospel and we will die. Wir werden right? ein falsches Evangelium sehen und wir werden sterben. It says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Who told us? Wer hat es uns erzählt? The fathers. So what were they doing? Die Väter. Und was haben sie getan? Passing on the seed, right? They were obeying God's law, right? We will not hide them from their children. So what are they doing? Obeying the law, right? Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to the children. Right? He's shown us this very thing. This seed is to make the law known through parables to your children. Right? Das zeigt uns dasselbe. Also dieser Same soll ähm, Gottes Gesetz, also dieses Gleichnis weitergeben zu ihren Kindern. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise, and declare them to their children. Amen? Amen? So from generation to generation, right? Von Generation zu Generation. And how many generations does the Lord bear with? Und mit wie, wie Four. viele Generationen erträgt der Herr? Four generations. Vier Generationen. And the four generations are a parallel 
to that statue, right, which was four kingdoms. Die vier Generationen sind eine Parallele zu diesem Standbild. Das sind vier Königreiche. Right. So, John, when he's standing here, right? Johannes, wenn er hier steht. It's where the fourth gets punished, right? Da wird das vierte bestraft. But it's really five are fallen, right? Aber es ist dann wirklich fünf sind gefallen. Because the fourth is two, right? Das vierte sind ja zwei. But what's going to happen here? Was wird hier wieder kommen? Yeah, the 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 one, the fifth one rises here, right? Der fünfte. The, sorry, the sixth kingdom. Der, Thank you. Das sechste Königreich steht hier wieder auf. Right. Oder steht auf. But when you get here, the sixth, the seventh, join together, and the woman, this one of the seven, sits back on top of them, right? Und wenn man dann hierher kommt, dann verbindet sich das sechste und das siebte und die Frau, die ähm, Teil von den anderen war, sie ähm, sitzt dann auf ihnen. Mark in the Sunday law, right? Das markiert dann das Sonntagsgesetz. Which is what worship? Und das ist was für eine Anbetung. Baal worship, right? Also die Baals Anbetung. Which is sun worship, right? Was sun Anbetung ist. Okay. So, how many abominations was there? Und wie viele Gräuel gab Four. es? Four, right? Vier. So the Lord abides with us to the fourth abomination, right? Der Herr, er bleibt bei uns bis zum vierten Gräuel. You can see it's a direct link to this seven Sons with a woman sitting on each one of them, right? Dann sehen, das ist eine direkte Verbindung mit diese, mit diesen sieben Söhnen und auf jeden von ihnen setzt die Frau. Because that illustration will take you right through both Sunday laws, right? Weil diese Darstellung bringt dich dann durch beide Sonntagsgesetze hindurch. When you get to through both Sunday laws, what's complete? Und wenn du durch beide Sonntagsgesetze kommst, was ist abgeschlossen? No, when you get to this point, what's complete? Wenn man zu diesem Punkt kommt, was ist abgeschlossen? Just think of the, the, the through the two Sundays, what's complete? The gospel. The gospel. Das Evangelium. Right? It's, it's finished, right? It's complete, it's done. Es ist right? vollbracht, es ist eben abgeschlossen. Third angel's message comes back to him right there. The angel says, I've done what thou hast commanded me. Right? Die dritte Engelsbotschaft, also der Engel, der kommt zurück zu ihm und sagt, ich habe das getan, was du mir befohlen hast. So, you've either rejected receiving it, right? Also entweder hast du es abgelehnt, es zu erhalten. Or you've rejected to give it. Oder du hast es abgelehnt, weiterzugeben. But one way or the other, you're wicked, right? Aber ähm, ein oder auf die andere Art bist du böse. And, and you're gonna die, right? Und du wirst sterben. So, go to Joel chapter 1. Gehen wir jetzt zu Joel 1. And you see this very allegory being played out, right? Da sehen wir genau dieses Gleichnis, was hier ausgespielt wird. Okay, verse 1. Vers 1. It says, The word of the Lord that came unto Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Right? So, Just go back to Psalm 78 and verse 8. Because that was the, 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 the psalm we were reading about passing on the parable or the parables down through the generations. Right? Das war der Psalm, den wir gelesen haben, wo sie das Gleichnis ähm, durch die Generation weitergeben sollen. It says, and might not be as their fathers. A stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart right and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Okay? Because they didn't pass on the seed, right? Sie haben den Samen nicht weitergegeben. Okay, so, um, in Joel 1, verse 2. Joel 1, verse 2. Hear this, ye old men, give ye all ye inhabitants of the land, hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. This is just a repeat of Psalm 78, right? <laughs> that which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, 
and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Four insects, right? Four insects. And they are eating, they are devouring the, the, the church. And right? they essen or they verzehren the Gemeinde. It says, Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl, or ye drinkers of wine, because the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth. So, this, this um, parable here, where does it refer to in the law? Auf was bezieht sich dieses Gleichnis im Gesetz? There's four locusts here. What is it referring to? Also, here gibt es vier um, Insekten. Auf was bezieht sich das? Le Leviticus 26, right? Auf is in the law. Auf right? 3. Mose 26, das in, ist ja im Gesetz. And Leviticus 26 is a progressive punishment of four times seven times, right? Und in 3. Mose 26, da sieht man diese fortschreitende Bestrafung von diesen vier bis sieben Zeiten. And the fourth one, when the fourth one is enacted at the end of it, what is it? Und wenn das vierte dann ausgeführt wird, was ist das? Right, so destruction of Jerusalem, but and what is that? What's another name for it? Das ist dann die Zerstörung Jerusalems und was ist ein weiterer Name dafür? Okay, maybe it's just a... It's the day of the Lord, right? Das ist der Tag des Herrn. The day of the law is when he comes to punish you, right? Tag des Herrn ist, wenn er kommt, um dich zu bestrafen. Okay, because um, in Joel 1, verse 6. Joel 1, verse 6. For a nation has come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion, right? So, just go to 1 Peter, chapter 5. Gehen wir zu 1. Petrus 5. Verse 8. Vers 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may what? Devour, right? So, this nation that's come upon the land is likened unto this lion, right? Also diese Nation, die über das Land gekommen ist, wird mit diesem Löwen verglichen. But it says in verse 9, Wenn Vers 9 sagt es, whom resist steadfast in the faith, Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Okay? So, what is it that we're to resist against the devil? And what sollen wir um, widerstehen gegen den Teufel? Well, you should all know this because you should all be having this experience, right? So, what is it that you're resisting? So, ihr solltet das alle wissen, weil ihr solltet ja alle diese Erfahrung haben. Was muss man wieder Right, his false suggestions, Seine right? Seine falschen ähm, Vorschläge. His false suggestions are a false <lacht> seed, right? Seine falschen Vorschläge sind sein, ähm, diese falsche Samen. It says that the seed is the <lacht> word of God, right? Es sagt, der Same ist das Wort Gottes. Thy word is truth, right? Und dann um, dein Wort ist um, Wahrheit. So, it says in, the, in God's word, we have to hate every false way. Right? Gottes Wort sagt, dass wir sollen jeden falschen Weg hassen. So, Satan is always trying to insinuate in our minds false ways, trying to direct us to do false things. Right? Also Satan versucht immer um, in unserem Verstand diese falschen um, Wege oder falschen Gedanken. Right, in error is also like a seed, right? Dass wir dann falschen ähm, Dingen folgen und der Irrtum ist auch wie dieser falsche Samen. Okay, go to Psalm. Lord, you unfortunate. Because in Ezra chapter 9, because you showed that the seed is the word of God, but, or the truth or the error, but it also can be people, right? Yes. Also du hast gezeigt, dass der Same die Wahrheit ist oder das Wort Gottes, aber es kann auch ähm, sein Volk sein. And uh, in Ezra 9, verse 2, Ezra 9, verse 2, it says, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yes. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been cheap in this first verse. So it's false marriage, right? The holy seed yes. that needs to be passed on, but the 
passed on a corrupt seed. Yeah, they corrupted themselves because they mingled with the unholy seed. Yes. Das ist der heilige Same, der weitergegeben werden sollte, aber hier haben sie ähm, also, ähm, verdorben, weil sie das mit diesem verdorbenen Samen vermischt haben. Also shows that you therefore have to give pass on a holy message, a pure, clean message. Y yes. So. Und du musst auch eine heilige Botschaft weitergeben, also eine reine Botschaft. The external illustrates the internal, right? Das externe stellt ja das interne dar. And the kings it started off with Babylon. It all goes back to him, right? Und das hat ja mit Babylon angefangen. Also es geht alles darauf, darauf zurück. And it says that the king of Babylon is the king of kings. Und es sagt der König von Babylon ist der König der Könige. So he's the royal seed. Also er ist der königliche Same. But and as Lawrence rightly says, what are they forbidden to do? Und äh, wie Lawrence gesagt hat, ähm, was wurde ihnen verboten zu tun? Yes, to, ma to marry a stranger, right? <coughs> einen Fremden zu heiraten. And this woman, who is she? Und diese Frau, wer ist sie? She is a strange woman, right? Eine fremde Frau. This is what Proverbs <coughs> warns us about from the strange woman, right? Und da warnt uns Sprüche ähm, davor vor dieser fremden Frau. Okay, so they all those kings married this strange woman, and every one of them. Suffered the consequences, right? Weil diese Könige haben diese fremde Frau geheiratet und all, also jeder einzelne von ihnen hat dann die Konsequenzen erlitten. Okay, the Lord sets up kings and he takes them down, right? Der Herr setzt Könige ein und setzt sie wieder ab. And this parable that the, or this this illustration that these Sadducees brought forth is a is a, is a parallel representation to that, right? Diese Darstellung, die die Sadduzäer erzählt hatten, dass es eine parallele Darstellung dazu. You have to marry a, a pure church, right? This 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 woman that is what's the word we were using yesterday? Who is it that Boaz was marrying? Also du musst eine um, reine Gemeinde heiraten. Virtuous woman. Yeah, virtuous woman, Und, right? Und um, du musst dann so wie Boaz diese um, tugendhafte. tugendhafte Frau heiraten. Oh, because we read that he will not worry about this virtuous woman, she'll always do everything that's right, right? Wir haben ja gelesen, dass er sich nicht sorgen wird um diese tugendhafte Frau, weil sie wird immer das tun, was richtig ist. Okay. Okay. So all these allegories that they've got to be really brought together, they're teaching us something very deep, right? All diese Gleichnisse müssen wirklich zusammengebracht werden und sie lehren uns wirklich etwas Tiefes. Okay. So Psalm 22, verse 12. Psalm 22 and verse 12. It says, "Many bulls." Have compassed me. Where are we? Cross. It's the cross, right? Das Kreuz. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as ravening and as a roaring lion. So, why does the cross experience come upon us? Just based upon everything that we've studied this morning, why, why is this roaring lion? Coming upon God's people. Also gemäß dem, was wir heute Morgen studiert haben, warum kommt dieser brüllende Löwe über Gottes Volk? Wegen den Götzen in den Herzen. Yes, that might be true, but you've not, they've not <coughs> obeyed God's commandments by passing on the holy seed, right? Weil sie nicht Gottes Gebote befolgt haben, indem sie den heiligen Samen weitergegeben haben. Okay, and it says in Ezekiel 22 and verse 25. It says there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. How have they devoured souls? Wie haben sie Seelen verzerrt? Oh, they're false prophets, right? Sie sind ja falsche Propheten. Okay, they've been sowing a false seed, right? Sie haben einen Samen okay, so therefore each generation has been been getting developed, right? This is what Joel is referring to. Wurde jede Generation verzerrt und darauf bezieht sich auch Joel. And the Lord will bear down to how many generations? Der Herr wird bis wie viele Generationen Four, ertragen? right? Vier. And who was, which generation, or should I say, which Nation crucified Christ. In welche Nation hat Christus gekreuzt? The fourth, Rome, right? Die vierte, Rome. Okay, so it brings you down to this last opportunity, right? Das bringt dich dann zu diesem, diesem, äh, dieser letzten Gelegenheit. 
Okej. Okay. Gå till Proverbs 19, vers 12. Gehen wir zu Sprüche 19, vers 12. It says, the king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. Right? So, when you stand before kings, what is it you have to seek? Also, wenn du vor den Königen stehst, was sollst, nach was sollst du dann trachten? Their favor, right? Also, nach ähm, der Gunst. Okay, so, like... When the three Hebrews were thrown into the fiery furnace, did they find favor with the king in the end? Und als die drei Hebräer in den Feuerofen geworfen wurden, haben sie am Schluss ähm, Gunst erhalten des Königs? Yeah, he reversed the decree against them, right? Ja, und er hat dann das Dekret wieder umgedreht gegen sie. Okay. Also, das war, das gegen sie war. Because they received the revelation of Christ, right? Weil sie die Offenbarung Christi erhalten haben. Now they have seed to give now they have the now they can be sourced right dann haben haben sie Samen den sie geben können dann können sie ähm Seemänner sein but if you reject that exceeding bright light you're going to die right aber wenn du dieses übers helle licht ablehnst dann wirst du sterben okay right so um and look at the result go to Joel 1 and verse 7 Schauen wir uns jetzt das Ergebnis an, Joel 1 und Vers 7. This is the result of a false gospel, right? Und das ist das Resultat eines falschen Evangeliums. He hath laid my vine waste and barred my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Which generation is this? Welche Generation ist das? The fourth. Die vierte. Prophetically speaking, which generation are we? Prophetisch gesprochen, in welche Generation sind wir? We are the fourth, wir right? Sind die vierte. 1989, fourth generation. Seit 1989 ist die vierte Generation. This is the condition of our church, right? Das ist der Zustand unserer Gemeinde. And therefore, It's the last chance for, for God to raise up a seed in his people, right? Deswegen ist das die letzte Chance für Gott, dass er einen Samen aufrichtet in seinem Volk. And he's going to do that by, by bringing them into this great trial and making them realize their true condition, right? Und das wird er tun, indem er sie in diese große Prüfung bringt und dass sie ihren Zustand realisieren. Okay, just go, to, go down to the next quote. Gehen wir hinunter zum nächsten Zitat. It says, the work which the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity She will have to do in a terrible crisis under most discouraging and forbidding circumstances. Right? So, it comes back to this point that right here you have this first birth. Right? Es kommt dann zu diesem Punkt zurück, dass du hier die erste Geburt hast. And what's the command now? Und was ist jetzt das, der Befehl? Okay, go now. Yeah, to, to, to go... And tell all nations, right? Du sollst gehen und allen Nationen erzählen. Because on the day of Pentecost, it was commanded in the Bible, go ye to all nations and um, to basically share the gospel, right? Und weil am Tag der Pfingsten, da wurde ihnen gesagt, geht und ähm, sagt es allen Nationen und ähm, ja, teilt das Evangelium. But what did God's people not do? Aber was hat Gottes Volk nicht getan? They, they didn't obey. Sie haben nicht gehorcht. They didn't share the seed. Sie haben right? nicht den Samen geteilt. Okay. So it says, the work that the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, she will have to do in a terrible crisis under the most discouraging and forbidden circumstances. 
right here. It's the beginning, right? Und hier ist ja der Anfang. What is the beginning? Was ist der Anfang? It's day one, right? Das ist der erste Tag. It's creation week. Das ist die Schöpfung. Right? Seven days. Sieben Tage. Okay, and at the end of the creation week, the Lord is going to rest. Und right? am Ende der, um, der Schöpfungswoche wird der Herr ruhen. Okay, so <coughs> the point is that this allegory goes down through these seven sons, right? Und der Punkt ist, dass dieses Gleichnis, das geht um, hinunter durch diese sieben oh. Söhne. Just remember something. Go to the book of Jude. I think it's nice. Okay. Yes. Zum Buch für das. I wonder why it puts this in there, but maybe it's something to do with this. Ich habe mich auch gewundert, warum das da steht, aber vielleicht hat es etwas damit zu tun. Yeah, Vers 14. Judas 1 und Vers 14. It says, and Enoch also, the seven from Adam. Right? Der siebte von Adam. So it's also marking, he's the seventh. Uh, Maybe seven, maybe seven generations, but it's the seventh from Adam. It's marking this seventh seed, if you want to call it that. Das ist die siebte Generation, aber der siebte von Adam ist sozusagen der siebte Same. And it brings you to the execution of the judgment. Das bringt dich zur Ausführung des Gerichts. Right? That's what it's marking here. Right? Das markiert es ja hier. Just a just a thought I want to throw in. Right? Das ist nur ein Gedanke. Okay, so. The work which the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, she will have to do in a terrible crisis under the most discouraging and forbidden circumstances. The warnings that worldly conformity has silenced or withheld must be given under the fiercest opposition from enemies of the faith. And at that time, the superficial conservative class, whose influence has steadily retarded the progress of the work, will renounce the faith and take their stand with its avowed enemies toward whom their sympathies have long been tending. These apostates will then manifest the most bitter enmity, doing all in their power to oppress and malign their former brethren, and to excite indignation against them. So we just read that these false prophets are like lions devouring the prey, right? We have ja gerade gelesen, that these false prophets are like these brüllenden Löwen, who um, die, um, die Beute. Right. That's who is going to come and surround you, right? Das sind diejenigen, die dich dann umlagern werden. This day is just before us. The members of the church will individually be tested and proved. They will be placed in circumstances where they will be forced to bear witness for the truth. Many will be called to speak forth before councils and in co courts of justice, perhaps separately and alone. The experience which would have helped them in this emergency they have neglected to obtain, and their souls are burdened with remorse for wasted opportunities and neglected privileges. Okay? So, what do they realize now at this point? Was realisieren Sie jetzt an diesem Punkt? That they, they didn't do that work of passing on the seed, and therefore they're about to, they're about to perish. Right? Dass sie nicht dieses Werk getan haben, den Samen weiterzugeben, deswegen sind sie ähm, dabei zu vergehen. They realize that it's now life or death that they're facing, right? Sie realisieren jetzt, dass es Tod oder Le Leben oder Tod ist, ähm, dem sie jetzt begegnen. Okay, now we'll come back to this. Go to Isaiah chapter 20. Gehen wir jetzt zu Jesaja 20. This is the, the, this is the thought that I have, and we have to prove if this... Is what it's referred to. But das ist jetzt der Gedanke, den ich habe, und wir müssen prüfen, ähm, ob, das, ob es sich darauf bezieht. But, uh, anyway, it says, verse one. Vers 1. In the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it, at the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins. And put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. So what was he to do? Was sollte er tun? You put off his shoe, right? Er sollte now, seinen Schuh von seinem Fuß... When the shoe was loosed off your foot, what did it mean? Und wenn der Schuh von deinem Fuß gelöst wurde, was, soll, was, wird, was bedeutet das? 
you, it means that you you're refusing to pass you, you refuse or refusing to pass on the seed. Das right? bedeutet, dass du es abgelehnt hast oder dich geweigert hast, den Samen weiterzugeben. And it's been paralleled to putting on sackcloth, das right? Wird dann mit parallel gesetzt, um dieses Sacktuch anzuziehen. So in Joel, what were they to do? Und in Joel, was sollten sie tun? Okay. Go back to Joel 1 and verse 13. Geht zurück zu Joel 1 und Vers 13. It says, Gird yourselves and lament ye priests. Howl ye ministers of the altar. Come lie all night in sackcloth. Right? So, Mordecai. What does he do when the death decree comes? Was hat Mordecai getan, als das Todesdekret kam? He puts on sackcloth, yeah. right? Um, Sacktuch angezogen. Okay. So, go back to Isaiah 20. Gehen wir zurück zu Jesaja 20. Verse 3. Vers 3. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation of Egypt, their glory. And the inhabitants of this isle shall say in that day, Behold, such is our expectation, whether we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? Right? So, here the Lord was using an external illustration. The, the nations, <coughs> where he treats exactly the same, were told to loose the shoe off and put on sackcloth. Right? So here he had us an external illustration, and the nations with whom he on the same way he deals, should now wurde jetzt gesagt, dass sie den Schuh ausziehen sollen und Sacktuch anziehen sollen. Does he also deal with the nations down to four generations? Und ähm, handelt er auch mit den Nationen über vier Generationen? Yes, right? When did they come out of Egypt? Wann sind sie aus Ägypten herausgekommen? The fourth generation, right? In der vierten Generation. Because the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet full, right? Weil, ähm, das, das Maß der so he waited till the fourth generation and now it was full, right? Okay, right. Go to Acts. Chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Verse 1. Acts chapter 13. Verse 24. It says, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So what was he preaching? Was hat er gepredigt? It, do, it doesn't, okay, and maybe that's true, but it doesn't mention that in there. I'm just based upon that verse that we just read, what was he preaching? Basierend auf dem Vers, was hat er gepredigt? Repentance, right? Repentance. What was Joel preaching? Was hat Joel gepredigt? The same message, right? That they all needed to repent. Repent of what? Dass sie alle Buße tun sollten von was? That they have not either received the seed or passed it on, right? Dass sie entweder den Samen nicht erhalten haben oder nicht weitergegeben haben. Because when Christ came, right? John was preparing the way for Christ, right? Johannes hat ja den Weg für Christus vorbereitet. And they didn't know him, right? Sie haben ihn nicht erkannt. That's what John John 1 says, right? It says he came to his people and his people knew him not. They accepted him not, right? Sagt ja Johannes 1, denn er kam zu seinem Volk und sein Volk erkannte ihn nicht. Sie haben ihn nicht akzeptiert. Okay, Acts 13 verse 25. Apostelgeschichte 13 Vers 25. And as John fulfilled his course, he said whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. So what what's he talking about? So right? was spricht er? Where are your shoes loosed? Wann werden deine Schuhe gelöst? 
What about what about Joshua? Let's go to just go to Joshua chapter five. Gehen wir zu Joshua Kapitel fünf. I often wondered what this means. Ich habe mich oft gewundert, was das bedeutet. Vers 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes. What did he do? Was hat er getan? He lifted up his eyes, right? Seine Augen erhoben. He's about to see the revelation, es right? Ist davor, die zu sehen. And looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. What does that mean? Was bedeutet das? Yes, who, who, does, who is this? Das Gericht und wer ist das? Okay, the, 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 it might be all those things, but just in this story, who is it? It's Christ, right? And we went through this, when he's got his sword drawn, he represents the slayer, right? Wir haben das ja angeschaut, wenn er das Schwert gezückt hat, dann stellt er den Schlachter the avenging angel is the slayer, right? Okay. It says, And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for adversaries? And he says, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord I am now come. And Joshua did what? Falls on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy Foot, for the place where on thou standest is holy, and Joshua did so. What is he saying to Joshua? Was sagt er zu Joshua? Yeah, you, you're about to die. What did Isaiah say when he saw the Lord? Du bist kurz davor zu sterben, weil was hat Jesaja gesagt, als er den Herrn gesehen hat? Wo ist me, right? Wo ist mir? So Christ is trying to impress upon Joshua, you're a, you're a great sinner, right? Also Christus möchte Joshua ähm, das damit beeindrucken, dass er also dass er ein großer Sünder ist. Das ist das, das ist jetzt in Isaiah 20, what we read. Das hat auch gesagt in Jesaja 20. Und da sehr hat zu take off his shoes, right, and walk barefoot. Yes. Dass Jesaja seine ähm, Schuhe ausziehen sollte und barfuß laufen And it says, so, sh so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captive, young and old, naked and barefoot. So it's a symbol of the a captive yes. Yes. to Assyria. So in the sense, you realize now, like he's, Paul. He's in captivity to sin. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes, it's Romans 7 man. Yes. In Jesaja 20, Vers 4. Steht eben, dass sie dann gefangen geführt werden, nackt und barfuß. Und also du realisierst dann, dass du gefangen bist zu Assyrien, also in dieser Gefangenschaft der Sünde, so wie Paulus. So, what was John saying? In Rom, Römer 7. Okay, what was John saying then, when Christ came? Und was hat Johannes dann gesagt, als Christus kam? Okay, John knew that Christ was holy. Right. Johannes wusste, dass ähm, Christus heilig ist. He said, what? I can't take your shoes off. Ja. Right? Because if he took his shoes off, what would he be saying? Und dann hat er gesagt, ich kann deine Schuhe nicht ausziehen, weil wenn er das äh, getan hätte, was hätte, hätte er dann gesagt? He said, you're a sinner. Dass right? du ein Sünder bist. But he, he realized, but the Lord said, suffer it so, for to fulfill all Righteousness, right? Aber der Herr hat dann, der Herr hat dann, also Christus hat dann zu ihm gesagt, lass es so ähm, zu, um alle Gerechtigkeit zu erfüllen. Okay, And just go, go to John chapter 9, right? Gehen wir zu Johannes 9. And this, this principle is right here, right? Dieses Prinzip ist genau hier. Vers 39. Johannes 9, Vers 39. So, when Christ came to Joshua, 
he's like this this destroying angel with a sword raised in his hand, right? Also als Christus zu Josua kam, dass er war wie dieser zerstörerische Engel mit dem Schwert in seiner Hand. Okay, and the student of prophecy has to realize that this is a symbol of the destroying angel, right? Der Student der Prophetie muss dann feststellen, dass das ein Symbol ist für den zerstörerischen Engel. And Joshua has to realize his condition or the Lord can't use him, right? Joshua muss seinen Zustand realisieren, sonst kann der Herr ihn nicht erretten. That's the same way Moses, right? You have the burning bush to take his shoes off. It's basically like, okay, there's condemnation coming upon you and then it was after that scene, he was about to get slain because he hadn't circumcised his son. No, two different illustrations, you're mixing them up. Well, that's fine. Wasn't at the burning bush the condemnation came oh, upon? Burning bush, we had to take off his shoes. Yes, different illustration. Also, standing on bush. Ground, that's what it says here also. Yes, it's a different illustration. It's not the illustration where the, the Lord is going to slay him. Two different illustrations. They come line upon line, but it's not this. Okay, but they're not the same illustration. Also, um, am brennenden Busch musste Mose auch seine Schuhe ausziehen und um, das ist eben eine eine Darstellung, dann gibt es noch eine weitere Darstellung, wo ähm, der, er nicht den, seinen Sohn beschnitten hat und dann kam der Herr unter, um ihn zu erschlagen. Okay. Die muss man Linie auf Linie ziehen. Two different places in the Bible, right? You have to bring them together line upon line, but they're not the same. You, you, the way you said that, they were at the same. No, I mean, in the one he's not slain, I mean, in the other one he's not taking off his shoes, so of course you have to bring them together and that makes it the same as what we're really doing. Yes, line upon line the same. But yes. Okay. So, Linie auf Linie sind sie eben dieselbe Darstellung. Okay, so, John 9, verse 39. Lesen wir Johannes 9, und Vers 39. It says, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see. And that they which see might be made blind. So who, who is he coming to? Also, to whom comes he? Come on, let's stick with this verse. Who is Christ coming to? To whom comes Christ? The blind. Who is which blind? Which blind? Spiritually blind. Okay. It's those that recognize that they're blind, right? Okay, because verse 40, some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? So the question is, were they blind? Yes, they were blind, right? But only those ones that recognize they are blind came to Christ. Aber nur diejenigen, die es anerkannt haben, dass, oder gemerkt haben, dass sie blind waren, sie kamen zu Christus. Okay, which message comes to God's people at the this final test? Welche Botschaft kommt zu Gottes Volk bei diesem finalen Test? Right, you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and what? Naked. Also die right? Botschaft an Laodicea, yes. dass du elend und erbärmlich bist, arm, blind und nackt. So when they took the shoes off, what else did they have to do? Also als sie die Schuhe ausgezogen haben, was mussten sie noch tun? Walk naked, right? Sie mussten nackt wandeln. Okay, it's, so basically when he, he comes and takes your shoes off you or tells you to take your shoes off, immediately the student of prophecy was to realize, oh dear, I've, I've disobeyed God's law and the condemnation should come straight to your heart, right? Also wenn er dir sagt, dass du deine Schuhe ausziehen musst, dann muss der Student der Prophetie das erkennen, eben dass ähm, diese große Verdammnis über dich kommt und dass du feststellst, dass du sein Gesetz gebrochen hast. And you would realize that you're blind, und dass right? du realisierst, dass du blind bist. Und er sagt, Jesus said unto him, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you see, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. So they refuse to accept their condition, right? Sie haben sich geweigert, ihren Zustand zu zu akzeptieren. Judas that refused the foot washing, right? Das ist nicht wie Judas, wo er die Fußwaschung take off their shoes for the foot washing on them. Because they're unclean, right? Ah, okay. I, I, yes, okay, that, that's a valid point. Weil sie mussten ja ihre Schuhe ausziehen für die Fußwaschung und ähm, realisieren, dass sie unrein waren. Okay. Und Judas hat das abgelehnt. Und Judas hat das abgelehnt. 
Okay, because the only places you find this in the Bible about taking the shoes off is these places that we read, right? right. So they must be linked together. The only places in the Bible where it says that you should take your shoes off, we have read it, so we must be connected with it in some way. So, when you come back to this quote, it talks about... Um, um, that the, the, the most terrible, uh, just go back to the first quote we read, excuse me, I can't. Geht noch mal zurück zu dem ersten Zitat, this, yes. was wir gelesen hatten. Second paragraph in, in the first quote. Also das erste Zitat und dort der zweite Absatz. It says, no error accepted by the Christian world strikes more boldly against the authority of heaven. None is more directly opposed to the dictates of reason. None is more pernicious in its results than the modern doctrine so rapidly gaining ground that God's law is no danger, is no longer binding upon men. So the rich man, when he came to Christ, what did he say about the law? I have kept all these things from my youth up. Right? But had he kept the law? Aber hat er das Gesetz gehalten? No. Nein. Christ was telling him, take off your shoes. Right? Jesus hat ihm gesagt, ähm, nimm deine Schuhe, zieh deine Schuhe auf. But he didn't want to accept that, right? Er wollte das nicht akzeptieren. And how, so therefore the answer is, how is God's people at the end of the world breaking God's law? Und deswegen die Frage am Ende der Welt, wie bricht Gottes Gesetz? Because they do not understand prophecy. They do not understand what all those things are pointing to. Right? And therefore it's impossible for them to obey those things. And they're blind. Okay. So only by having their eyes opened will they see and be able to repent. Right? indem ihre Augen geöffnet werden, werden sie das sehen und davon Buße tun. So, my understanding of that would be that when the Lord tells you to take off your shoes, he has to bring you to humble yourself before him in repentance, right? Deswegen, so wie ich das verstehe, wenn der Herr dir sagt, zieh deine Schuhe aus, dann will er dich dazu bringen, dass du ähm, dich demütigst und Buße tust. Right? Okay. May I just one final thought of it? Because it also speaks about the whole armor of God, right? It speaks also about the whole armor of God. And it says, in your feet, shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes, I also thought it at this point. So in a sense, you come there, you have to take off your shoes. Peter. And if you repent, you will put on the shoes yes. again, or he will put on the shoes again. Because Peter was told to do what? Und da sagt es dann, also bei der Waffenrüstung, dass man ähm, diese, dass sein, die Schuhe sollen mit dem Evangelium des Friedens äh, ausgerüstet sein. Ähm, und also du musst dann deine Schuhe ausziehen und ähm, was hast du gesagt? Und dann, wenn du dich aufhörst, dann, wenn du repent, dann wirst du die Schuhe aufhören. In dem Sinne, dass du die Schuhe aufhörst. Und wenn du dann Buße tust, dann ziehst du diese Schuhe an und und dann sendet er dich mit dem Evangelium. Und was hat Petrus getan? Ja, yeah, Peter, when he was in the prison, what did the angel came to him and told him to do what? Also was hat der Engel ähm, dem Petrus gesagt, als er im Gefängnis war? Put on, Put on your shoes. Put on your shoes. Right? deine Schuhe an. So it was the right shoes he had on, the, the gospel. Right? Das waren dann die richtigen Schuhe, die er anhatte, das Evangelium. Right. Und wir haben auch das Passalam mit ihren... Yes, it says make with your shoes on, right? So we've got to really look closely at these things about these shoes, right? It's not just some <laughs> cast off saying there, right? It's really meaning something deep for us, right? We müssen das wirklich tief betrachten mit diesen Schuhen. Das ist nicht einfach so da geschrieben, sondern hat auch eine tiefe Bedeutung. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm sure there's more, more that will come out on this topic. Right? Let's go close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, 
Uh, Lord, we thank you for these uh, thoughts that you gave us this morning. Ja, wir danken dir für die Gedanken, die du uns heute Morgen gegeben hast. And uh, uh, chose us once more that you're the one giving us the shoes, the gospel shoes. Und das zeigt uns wieder, dass du derjenige bist, der uns diese Schuhe, diese Evangeliumsschuhe gibt. And that we can pass on the, the holy seed. Damit wir den um, heiligen Samen weitergeben können. But Lord, we ask you to please help us um, to then also acknowledge when this rebuke comes that we would uh, lay off our shoes. Und Herr, hilf uns, dass wir dann auch, wenn dieser Tadel zu uns kommt, dass wir das anerkennen und unsere Schuhe um, weglegen. That we would realize that um, Yeah, our own thoughts are all foolishness. Und dass wir realisieren, dass all unsere eigenen Gedanken Torheit sind. And that we would accept everything uh, where you need to reprove us. Und dass wir alles akzeptieren, wo du uns tadeln musst. That uh, we repent and then also uh, can be reinstated again. Und dass wir Buße tun und dann wieder hergestellt werden können. And that you can give us these gospel shoes to Sent forward. Dass du uns diese Evangeliumsschuhe geben kannst, damit wir vorwärts gesandt werden können. Lord, help us only now to be faithful in the little things you already gave us. Und Herr, hilf uns jetzt nur treu zu sein in den kleinen Dingen, die du uns schon gegeben hast. That we would recognize and use every opportunity to pass on the truth as much as possible. Dass wir jede Gelegenheit erkennen und nutzen die Wahrheit um, weiterzugeben, so weit wie möglich. Yes, um, uh, but still understanding that we are not sent yet. Und dass wir trotzdem verstehen, dass wir noch nicht gesandt sind. Therefore be careful how we pass on the seed. Und dass wir vorsichtig um, sind, wie wir den Samen weitergeben. And that we would um, yeah, bring all these things together and that you would help us, Lord, to only be faithful in those things that you already Us. Und dass wir all diese Dinge zusammenbringen und dass du uns hilfst, treu zu sein in den Dingen, die du uns schon gegeben hast. We ask and pray all these in Jesus name. Wir bitten und beten all diese Dinge in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen.